Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Um, so with this uh, timed assessment, the system will warn you as you are trying to start because um, it is a time limit. Once you click on start, then the time doesn't stop for any reason. You, you have 10, so once I start, I have until six, uh, 618 to finish the assessment. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start. And there's a timer here, yeah. The timer tells me how much time I have. And uh, these rules, uh, you had access to it before you started, so you shouldn't be wasting a lot of time reading through this. So, so let me just work through. You get 10 questions, come in order. And once you work your way through down to the bottom, that's where you submit. And as you work through this set, it will save your work. You see how it says progress is saved. So somehow if you get disconnected, somehow you are not able to click the submit and end the button at the end, um, there will be still some saved work that, um, that can be used in some way. So I'll just work through. Okay, suppose you're holding a meter stick, ruler that is meter long, marked on one side within centimeters. Approximate how many marks do you see? Oh, inch side. Now I happen to know that inches are about two point four, two point five centimeter each. Or I guess better yet, I know in one yard there are three feet, and in one foot there are twelve inches. So one yard has a thirty six uh, inches, and one yard is about a meter. So it should be thirty marks. Um, Choose the choice which most correctly completes the sentence. In order for the laws of classical physics to apply, it is necessary to have situations. Uh, uh, classical physics, oh, it's the thing about the speed of light and some size scale, special relativity and quantum mechanics. So it must have speeds uh, much less than speed of light. And, uh, and the size, yeah, yeah, that's not necessary. So I think that's the right choice. Question three, answer for an object thrown straight up and falling down on earth, taking upward as positive, that seems natural. Uh, statement which most correctly describes this situation. Uh, velocity is, is not zero on the way up, on the way up it's positive. So I'm gonna go to the next choice. Velocity is zero on the way down, it's negative. <laughs> velocity of this object is zero at the top. Its velocity changes the direction at the top. At the top, the acceleration due to gravity. At the top. Um, something seems to be wrong here. Uh, there may be an issue with the question. Um, just trying to see. All right, um, so actually I'm gonna do this, which is what I recommend. Um, um, <laughs> so if you see something weird in the question, do this. First, open message instructor window. Now, don't waste time doing this because 10 minutes is very short. I have opened this, so I can do that after I'm done. But uh, for now, I'm gonna do my best to, to answer this. Um, the velocity of the object is zero at the top. That seems right so far. And there's some grammatical issue here. Okay, I'll let that be, but I'm gonna select this and then move on. And what I uh, have as a reminder to myself is I'm gonna come back to this later and send me a message uh, that something seems to be wrong. <laughs> that that's a, I think a good thing to demonstrate in this recorded session. Uh, for this question, let the right be positive, left to be negative. If a runner runs to right while slowing down, this person, okay, runs to right, so velocity should be positive. Slowing down, which means the acceleration is in the leftward direction, so that should be negative. So velocity is positive, yeah, acceleration is negative. Okay, which of the following statements most to incorrectly describes the properties of projectile motion. The vertical, okay, that's correct. Speed of projectile is slowest at the top of the motion. Seems reasonable, so probably correct. Projectile motion can be, uh, yeah. This is one of those uh, definition thing. If something is undergoing a projectile motion, then by definition, air resistance should be negligible. If it wasn't negligible, you shouldn't have called it a projectile motion. It's, it doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense. It's just a definition thing. Oh. 
And I guess you can also do it by process of elimination. Uh, Coincider cannon, they can fire uh, if the initial speed of the means same. Oh, I think I've seen this example before, 45 degrees. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I need to read the question. It'll stay in the air for the longest possible length of time. It's not asking me when, uh, at what angle it'll have the maximum range, which was what I was thinking of, but I need to answer what the question asks. So for that question, it needs to be 90 degrees so that I'm firing it straight up, that will maximize the amount of time in the air. Um, okay, for this question, let right be positive, left to be negative. Car moves to the left, okay, negative velocity while speeding up. Now, this is the tricky part because if uh, it's speeding up while will, it's moving to the left, that acceleration is pointing to the left. So acceleration is also negative. So velocity and acceleration are both negative. Okay, single traffic jam ahead or motorist uh, taps the brakes, slowing down at this speed for next six seconds. At the end of that, what is the motorist speed if the initial speed was that? All right, um, I can do this in a calculator really without writing things down. So my initial speed was 34. It's his, the motorist is slowing down, so I'm gonna be subtracting a number. And the number I'm subtracting is the acceleration times the duration of time. Uh, three times a six. Hopefully you remember from your reading that change in velocity is acceleration times the duration of time. There are some calculation questions, not many. So, you know, if you want to skip questions like this, fine, that might be a good time management. Um, um, but uh, chapter two is weird. It's uh, one of the most mathematical chapter in the entire semester. Okay, Kunstara rock thrown directly upward at this speed, use that. Ignore the air register, okay. How long does it take for the rock to reach the highest point of the trajectory? Okay, um, this might be worth writing down. Uh, so this is one of those calculation questions. Maybe if you don't immediately know what to do, you might want to consider skipping. <laughs> but here, what I'm remembering is a change in velocity is the acceleration times the duration of time. By the way, I'm watching my time here. 6.59, three minutes, and I'm looking two questions, three minutes. I have enough time, that's why I'm wasting my time here. Um, so I'm looking for duration of time. So duration of time is equal to change in velocity divided by acceleration. So I'm looking at these numbers. My velocity is gonna change from 35 meters per second. So at the highest point, my velocity there is zero. It's something that, I hope you remember from your reading. So my change of velocity is gonna be 35 meters per second. My acceleration, the magnitude is 10 meter per second squared. So work this out, you get 3.5 seconds. Uh, do I see, yeah, well, it takes around 3.5 seconds to reach the highest point. Okay, uh, I'm almost done and also almost out of time. Uh, which of the following are generally correct features of a constant acceleration motion? Velocity is not constant, constant acceleration. So if you have non-zero acceleration, that means velocity should be changing. Uh, in fact, the velocity is changing at constant rate. That's the feature of constant acceleration. So that's all my answers. So at this point I can submit an end. Um, oh, um, it might be worthwhile. So I'm gonna do this. Oh yeah, eight out of 10 answered. So I want to click on save progress. <laughs> so I have 10 out of 10 answered. And uh, I think uh, I can show you uh, what happens when your time runs out and somehow if you didn't get to click submit and end. Um, so let me do that. I'm gonna go write this message to myself. Um, uh, the question uh, choices sound ungrammatical, i.e. Um, here, uh, the velocity and it, like at the top, uh, yeah, ungrammatical. Uh, uh, is there something missing before at the top? Um, I tried my best to, to uh, select the correct answer. And when you send me a message like this, what this uh, uh, gives me an opportunity 
what this lets me do is um, I will get that message and I'll take a look at it eventually. I'm not going to answer within your 10 minutes. In fact, I don't even recommend that you use any of your 10 minutes to do something like this. But it lets me look at the choice, look at the question, uh, fix anything that's wrong, and um, make sure that no one's losing points unfairly. And so, uh, so I'll take a look at it and fix that after the session. Um, so I sent to that. Oh, yeah. And while I was doing that, wasting time, I ran out of time. And I think here the system automatically submitted it for me. And um, because probably because the window was open. Um, and yeah, I, I guess that's it. Um, I'm glad I got 100%. <laughs> that's uh, uh, not as embarrassing as it was going to be if I didn't get 100%. And um, so my intent to always was to hide the grade, but it, it doesn't work that way. The way LTI works, you will always see your uh, recorded the score. I, I've tried to hide this and I can't, so you're just gonna see it. And um, you can review work, but what it will never tell you is which questions you got right. So for example, if I got 80%, then um, I don't know which two questions I, I got wrong. Um, and uh, that is mainly to encourage you to study. <laughs> uh, Although I guess I'm not sure how. So, you know, this is what you can do. You can always message instructor and ask me, hey, did I get this wrong? And hopefully you have some sense of which questions you got right for sure and which questions you are unsure of. Like this one, you know, where there was something on grammatical. And so that's where you might message me and say, uh, hey, I got 80% or something. And I think this might be one of the questions I missed. And um, so... So yeah, so with a multiple choice at timed assessment, you do get uh, two attempts. So if you get a score and you don't like it, then you can reattempt, and uh, the system will keep the best score. So you don't once I you know once you get hundred percent or once you get eighty percent, then you don't have any uh, danger of losing that position of eighty percent. I see a question in the chat. Let me just read it. Regarding the negative acceleration question, are there situations on the test where we need to keep an eye out for the terminology difference between acceleration uh, and delta v? Um, so delta v is also a vector. Um, <laughs> so uh, because the velocity is a vector, you can see that in one of the questions here, which is, um, so I think the way I was going through it, uh, I didn't really highlight it. So, um, you know, for this question, you know, let the right be positive and left to be negative. And um, so, so when we say velocity is positive, what we are really saying is the velocity vector is pointed, uh, po pointed rightward. That is what we are saying. And um, now I guess if you are as, uh, this is one thing that I can imagine some people uh, getting caught up, which I think was demonstrated in one of the questions here. Um, so I can imagine some people saying, oh, here the acceleration is positive because the car is speeding up. And this is where I've treated acceleration as a vector quantity. That's why I said acceleration is negative because all by all that I meant was acceleration is directed the left one. That's all I mean. And I don't think I have any questions that actually ask. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think I have any questions that directly asks about the uh, delta V as in change of velocity. And if I did, you would treat delta V as, um, as, as vector. Um, I think if I wanted you to treat it like uh, um, speed going up or speed going down, I would actually add, use this phrase, speeding up or slowing down. Um, one phrase that you would never see me use in this class is the phrase deceleration, because uh, I think that's just hugely confusing. So I never use the word deceleration. I will always say speeding up or slowing down. And those always refer to the uh, change of the speed, change in the magnitude of velocity. Um, so I guess that would be scalar. Maybe that's what, <laughs> that's what the questioner meant. <laughs> 
So, okay. So having done all that, let me show you why watching this recorded video won't give you all the answers to the, um, won't give you all the answers to the multiple choice timed assessment for chapters one and two. And this is why I feel comfortable doing this on recording. Let me leave my student view so that I can go into my instructor view. And <laughs> I was just testing things out <laughs> and show you how this is a setup. Uh, when I go to LTI home, go to questions. This is uh, how the whole thing is a setup with, uh, so the I use something called a question pool. And it has some structure to it, particularly for an assessment that has multiple chapters in it. I have it set up so that all the first two questions always are from chapter one. And it, that's what this means, choosing two without replacement. And the system is choosing those two questions from a pool of 12 questions. So out of the pool of 12, you've seen two. So the, for those two that you have seen, you have some idea of what the answers are, but there's still 10 um, that you haven't seen yet. And there's a good chance that the, the two questions you will get will come out of the 10 rather than the two. Um, the questions from chapter two. So that's the remaining eight. And those remaining eight are chosen out of a pool of uh, 50 questions. And you have seen eight of those 50 questions. So, um, so you know, when you take your assessment, there's a probably good chance that uh, two or maybe even up to three questions that you will see are from the ones that you've seen me do. Now, even in those cases, I do want to warn you that um, uh, this is a sophisticated system, which is I love about it. Um, some of the, the questions are dynamically generated or some of the questions have multiple versions in one. So just because a question sounds similar, you shouldn't assume that it's exactly the same question because um, uh, the dynamically generated one is that I love the most because uh, I name it dynamically generated because it generates a number of choices that are just a lot. Uh, so what, which question was this? all quantities below as vectors and scalars, yeah. And the way this question is generated, I have a list of things that are vectors. Displacement, the force velocity, which you have seen. List of things that are scalars, distance, energy, speed, or temperature. And there's this code here that um, puts these things together and the statements are uh, relatively unique. <laughs> um, so in fact, the one that I sent the message about, I, it's one of those dynamically generated ones and the bug that I had to find and fix are one of these things. So I'll do that off session because, and um, so, so really the purpose of these assessments are to test your understanding. And um, so that's why I feel, and especially for multiple choice questions, I have a really, rich set of um, questions. That's why I feel comfortable doing this, at least once and possibly even twice on recording because uh, in this recording, I'm showing you basically how the process works without giving you a lot of answers that'll, you know, I'm not giving away any answers to the questions. Uh, really the way to do well on these is to study so that no matter what kind of questions you get, you can do well. Now um, I can give you some level of assurance that um, you can really do well by studying uh, your homework questions. So let me just pick a question at random here, like uh, this one here. So, um, so this question here, when, uh, so, you know, the question description says test the bank version. And this is the sense in which it's a test the bank version. It's uh, derived from this question here, 205, 860. And, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, time for me to find this question, but let me just define this so that uh, I can tell you, um, I can give you some level of confidence on what you should be studying for. So let me do this. Um, so I picked this question at random and this question says that it's derived from this particular question. All right, I'm gonna go to my open math and I have to guess what uh, set this comes from. That's the hardest thing. Uh, I think it's gonna, 
I'm going to guess this set. That's what I'm going to guess. And if I'm somehow wrong, I'll move on to the next set. I'm searching for that question number, uh, 205A60. OK, not the right one. <laughs> um, maybe this one, I think. 205A60. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So that's the question that this question was supposedly derived from. So let me preview this. Oh, wait, did that? OK, it did not replace that. OK, so these are the two questions. So this is a, this was one of your homework questions. Um, it says, you know, choose all valid units for acceleration. And uh, when you were going through homework, you had a chance to think about it, work through it. And the ones that should have been the correct answers were these two. Um, now, on the, the, on the test bank question, it asks, okay, which of the following is a valid unit for acceleration? And one of these two correct choices, this one is the correct answer for your test bank question. And I can guarantee you for close to 100% of your test bank questions, they have a matching homework question. So I'm not guaranteeing that every homework question will lead to a test bank question. Uh, what I'm guaranteeing you is that close to 100%, 95%, 99 of uh, your test bank questions, you can trace it back to a homework question. So if you have understood every homework question perfectly, then you can do every test bank question perfectly as well. So, so as you are, you know, studying and uh, preparing for the timed assessment, uh, what I would recommend is um, review your homework. That's uh, your best resource for preparing for this timed assessment. Even the calculation questions, um, you should be able to find the, the homework version. So, yeah, so, you know, take it once and if you get 20%, then study, prepare, and then take it again when you feel ready. Um, you get two attempts and really the uh, first attempt, it's intended that you might be using that as a practice so, to get a sense of how well you are prepared. And, you know, if you do it and you get 100%, great. You don't, you can move on to the next one. But if you got something, you know, something that you're not happy with, 50%, 70%, 30%. Different people have different, you know, level of expectations. Um, if your first attempt is on what you are happy with, then I would really recommend, rather than just to immediately retaking, to study and prepare uh, before you retake.